is the Cyano is quite a popular topic on a lot of marine forums and most of us have had it at one time or another. It's usually red in colour and resembles sort of a jam consistency in big blobs in low flow areas of the tank. You can also get other colour forms such as green and black as well, although the vast majority of hobbyists will only experience the red one. Now in a new aquarium this is quite a common thing in the first few weeks because when the aquarium is all new and there's not a lot of algae within the system to process nutrients, some of the bacteria, which are actually a bacteria rather than algae, are the first things to utilize those nutrients. The bacteria themselves are clear and the waste of the bacteria is brightly colored, red or blue or green or whatever. It will often seem to be growing in the lowest flowest areas of the tank, but that is actually just where the waste from the bacteria is accumulating. So putting a power head there to spread the waste around the tank doesn't actually get rid of the cyanobacteria in any way at all. There's various chemical products you can use to it, but it's very simple to eliminate and there's no need to resort to those. So how do we get rid of it? Well, in the maturing aquarium, you go through something that's called the algae cycles. You start off with primitive algae and foot photosynthesizing bacteria at the start, such as cyanobacteria, diatoms, and then you move on to things like hair algae, the green encrusting algae, eventually coralline algae, and then as the tank reaches full maturity, you'll get seaweed starts to develop. Now in the start, those cyanobacteria got free reign, so they'll spread quite quickly because there's none of the higher forms of algae there to outcompete them for their food supply. However, as soon as you start getting that first little hair algae and things through, that will soon outcompete the cyanol and the cyanol will go for good. So if you've got a new aquarium and you've got a little bit of cyanol, don't worry. Within a few weeks, hair algae and things will come through and that will eliminate the problem. However, you also see quite often an aquarium that's been running for a while and suddenly cyanol will spring up in the aquarium. And the reason it sprung up is usually nine times out of 10 down to a salinity swing. So you will usually find your salinity is either off, too high or too low, or it is wandering and has swaying more than half a point over the course of a week. If, you're, if your salinity is swinging all over the place, or too high or too low, then what happens is the higher forms of algae struggle to grow. Hair algae doesn't grow well under a fluctuating salinity, for example, and while they're struggling to grow and process nutrients, cyanobacteria, which were a thing of the past, can reappear and start soaking up the nutrients. Now this might seem like a bad thing, but actually it's doing you a favour in many ways, because without the cyano appearing and blossing up all the ammonia and nitrates and things, Without that there, you could well be looking at a tank crash. So what's basically happened is you've swung your parameters so much, you risk crashing the aquarium, and the cyanide is actually the good guy in this case and trying to save you from that happening. As soon as you keep your salinity stable at around 34 ppt and don't swing it around, within a week or two all the higher algae should have expanded enough to outbeat the cyano and it will disappear. It's worth mentioning that if you're checking salinity, never use a swing needle hydrometer. A floating hydrometer is okay as long as you're fairly practicing using those kind of things. Far better solution would be a refractometer. In store, you often use the DND wires or the Milwaukee's very good as well. Check your salinity using calibration fluids to ensure that it's reading correctly and keep it between 34 and 34 and a half ppt at all times. And if you can keep it within that narrow range, the sun will disappear very quickly. And also the other benefits of keeping your temperature and salinity very nice and stable is you're going to end up with less nitrate, less phosphate, and a lot of other less problems in the aquarium as well. Thanks for watching and check out all our other videos in our Ask James series.